Hey guys, in this video I'm going to cover my uh, sort of aged bronzed oxidized brass sort of technique um, that I've been doing recently on a selection of undead Rostroyan figures for my um, sort of 40k skeleton army. Um, so first thing we're going to need is to undercoat the metal areas in, well, Balor Brown, but my Balor Brown is dead. So instead I'm going to use uh, a much older paint that's still fine, snakebite leather. So yeah, if, you, if you've got Balor Brown, use that. It's not going to really make much difference because this is there's a few layers on top, but you want sort of that, um, well, this sort of colour really is the, the base coat. Right, so not much to it, we're just going to uh, paint the areas we need um, to be sort of gold or, or this sort of bronzy colour at the end uh, in this, um, this sort of tanny brown. So I'm just going to go with the, uh, the chest plate here. Uh, and then other bits and pieces like the, um, he's got some shoulder pads and whatnot. So uh, yeah, this this army has been um, been a fun thing to put together, but each model takes some time to convert and whatnot. Um, so I'm trying to do a few different uniforms, so it's not just Fostroyans. I've got the, uh, you know, the the obligatory Cadians and Catachans. I've got a Mordian. I'm just tr starting to. Uh, sculpt and convert some dead Talon Desert Raiders because I think they'll be uh, cool additions um, and some sort of Xenos skeletons as well uh, so yeah not much to do this give me a second and I will uh, undercoat all of the uh, the brassy areas there we go so um, pretty straightforward so far now the next colour we're going to need is uh, I can never pronounce this correctly um, Gehenna's gold, is that it? Whatever, this one. Um, and we're just gonna go over all the areas we've painted in the uh, snake bite leather or the bal or brown, depending on what you've used. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. And what you'll find is this sort of tanny undercoat um, is uh, pretty useful for sort of applying gold directly over it. It sort of brings out the, uh, the pigment, because I always find that metallic paints, they're quite thin. Like if if you, I mean, they seem to dry dry out quicker than others. But when they're new, they're quite thin. Like the um, this metallic pigment in in between a lot of sort of like what I would assume is sort of clear paint. Um, so without a proper undercoat of the the right shade, uh, you kind of lose a lot of that, um, a lot of the sort of uh, finish. So yeah, not much to this. So I'm gonna crack on with a. Uh, covering all these areas but yeah this, this army is something I did when I was like 16 and um, I'm kind of revisiting this sort of skeleton 40k um, force because back in the day I would have used the old sort of classic sort of 90s skeletons and they were pretty useful to convert into all sorts of different bits and pieces although in all fairness my 16 year old self probably wasn't very good at doing that um, but the the skeletons back then just they didn't have any real armor i think one one torso did have this sort of round round piece of armor on it um, but it meant you could convert them into all sorts of things uh, and i still have a few left so a lot of the cadians and catachans that i've been doing uh, make sure it's in focus are built from those old 90s skeletons and that's fine, but trying to find them uh, is pretty difficult. Um, I've got an eBay listing of some old ones that I think have only had one coat of paint on them before, and they're useful for, or I can at least use them for um, any heavy green stuff work, because it doesn't really matter if the, the paint's kind of already, or a little bit of the detail's been lost with a, a layer of paint if, you've, um, if you're just sculpting over top of it. But, um, Currently, with uh, what Games Workshop sell, these death rattle skeletons, they're, they're very good and all, and they certainly suit the fantasy setting that they're meant for, but it poses a bit of a problem when, um, when I'm trying to convert things into 40k, because of course these guys have got sort of uh, big breastplates and sort of plate mail and chain mail and things like that, so most of the 40k setting it doesn't really work. Um, so I've converted half of the 
20 man strong box to be Vostroyans. Uh, technically, I, I did add one commissar in the mix because the sort of breastplate will will work there. But I've now got another sort of 10 of these death rattle skeletons that I'm kind of reluctant to convert into another load of Vostroyans because I said the, the point of this army was allowing me to paint all sorts of different things and uniforms and colours and not get bored um, with just doing the same sort of monotonous colour schemes. Uh, and then if I end up including so many Vostroyans, then it kind of defeats that that initial purpose a little bit. So I don't know, open suggestions what you think I could use the Death Rattle Skeletons for, um, other than Vostroyans and sort of the occasional Commissar. Um, I did think about uh, maybe converting them to be Tempestus Scions, because they've got quite a bit of armour, but in all fairness, when I, when I looked at the, the Scion figures, you almost need to replace every piece of the death rattle armor anyway because it's it is quite different so maybe that's not going to work but um but yeah enough prattling uh, about this i think i'm almost done so let me just um make sure i finish this off camera and then i'll uh I'll jump on to the next paint there we go so you can see with the um the right sort of brown undercoat the just one layer of gold comes across uh, much better than it was it would have done if you put it straight over the um the gray sear sort of spray base coat that I've I've put on this model. Um so the next step is to use um Uruk Armor Gold. Right, so it's a much shinier gold, much lighter one. Um, and we're not going to um we're not going to totally cover all of the areas this time. Right, I just want to sort of pick out bits and pieces. Now I find that this paint provided it's new, again, just like the um, the Gehenna's gold, is quite thin. So in all fairness, you can kind of, well, smear it, I guess, um, over some of the raised areas. So like this breastplate here, I'm just trying to paint the sort of middle, um, leaving the the edges around the back here of like the, the other, the darker gold. So the front of it looks like it's catching the light a little bit more. Um, and I'll make sure that this is in focus. There we go. Um, see the tops of this, this um, shoulder pad there, and maybe running along the lines of the, the very top of this um, is it a van brace. I'm sure someone will correct me if that's wrong. Uh, and then maybe just along the side. So it's it's not edge highlighting with this. It's kind of selectively applying it to the um, to sort of raised areas. But again, because it it's quite a thin paint in in a, in a way, it blends quite nicely with the previous gold. So it actually hides a multitude of sort of sins. So you can. If I hadn't already painted the, the bone of uh, this guy, I would be a, a lot messier with this stage um, than I am right now. So yeah, bits and pieces like that. So yeah, not much to this bit. You just want to pick out some of the um, the edges uh, and some of the um, some of the facets of the armor that you think would be catching the light. So like again, the top of this band brace here. Just going to coat it in the the lighter gold, leaving the bottom of it the the darker gold. Um, so I think we'll just round the edge of the knife here as well. Just going to run it along the side, just apply a little bit to the top, uh, like so. So um, yeah, that's that bit. It's um, underneath the the light bulb I've got next to me. It's going to dry in no time at all. And then we'll move on to the next bit. Right, so with the gold stages all done, uh, I'm now going to move over to uh, Nihilic Oxide, which is the technical paint. Um, now I've given this a good shake already. Um, and this time we are going to apply it uh, much in the same way as we've done with the Urukama Gold, sort of very selectively. Like we don't want to coat um, the entire work we've done so far um, and I might also just water this down just a tad just 
making my um, bristles wet there um, is I'm I want to randomly apply this right so I might sort of stipple it a little bit here um, stipple it a little bit up there so certain parts of it are going to be quite thick right see down here there's quite a lot of the um, what is it the teal sort of coloring whereas up the top here it's 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 quite thin and that's fine that's kind of what I'm going for so I'm just going to go around again sort of stipple it apply it to certain areas I want some of the gold to still remain so it's not it's not completely uh, oxidized and be careful around the, um, the actual bone of his hand there so at this point it does look a bit of a mess not gonna lie um, but it, I think it works out in the end right, so all sort of stippling around here and then down below by his back. So yeah, um this is quite an easy step because you know again you're just being random, you don't have to pick out literally everything you've done beforehand. Um and it's quite a good technical paint actually. Um, for doing bits and pieces like this it does dry quite well and actually dries quite quickly as well especially if you're applying it quite um, thinly like I am so if you if you put this on to um, if your coat was too thick and you, you've applied too much of it it does kind of just turn the model till right so not really ideal not really what I'm going for uh, Go around there. Just pick out some of these bits as well. Careful, get the uh, bone. I think on the inside of his other arm, just there, and the knife hilt. Right now, is there anything else I kind of missed? Can't quite see because of the shadow of the uh, gun, but just underneath there, I want a little bit more. Just underneath his other armpit. Right, so let's bring that into focus again. So that's what I've got so far. Well, it's quite random, and there are little bits of it that are heavier than others. Let's see if I can move this light round a little bit. There we go, that's a better shot. So yeah, it's 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 um it's randomly applied. Some parts are thicker than others. Uh, and there's not much that's left with the the, the true gold. Um, there's quite a lot of it that it's quite a thin coat of the nihilic oxide, um, just like underneath his breathing apparatus just here. Um, so that's the next step. I'm going to leave that dry for a sec and then um, move on to the last stage. And finally, you might have guessed it, we're going to use um, Agrax Earth Shade. Right. So this will apply some depth and some shade uh, to, the, um, to the gold or the bronze, the brass, whatever it is. Now, I don't need a huge amount on the brush because if you apply it, too much it's going to um, pull all in the recesses and you'll get these horrible sort of brown spots um, at the bottom of your model um, but I'm just going to apply sort of thin coats here it actually when it's wet makes the whole sort of it, it makes the gold shine again which is quite interesting um, and, um, so I said the whole point of these these washes is to sort of run into the recesses to a degree and then apply a um and then apply some depth to the uh the piece right, so the sort of puckering the sort of dents here it all sort of runs into and, and highlights and picks out so it's quite a um it's quite a useful uh shade and i end up using it for loads of different bits and pieces with between this and um a uh, null noil and it also dries very differently. So at the moment you can see like the gold is pretty shiny. 
right? um, it, it mats off a little bit uh, when it does dry, which is kind of what I'm, it works. I suppose if it did dry and it was too matte for your liking, I guess you could probably water down some hard coat varnish if you wanted to give it a bit of a shine again. But the the whole point in, in my eyes of these sort of oxidized um, metals, they're not typically shiny anyway, so it does work. But if you were doing this um, as just a gold technique and you were applying the, um, the uh, Agrax here, I don't know, maybe... Maybe you add a bit of a varnish to the end, that will just bring a bit of shine back to it. But I don't know, I've not actually tried it, so test it if you're going to do it first. Um, don't do it on the final piece. Now, annoyingly, this is a bit of a problem. When when paint's so far away, I kind of dunk my brush in it. And it's gone, <laughs> sort of, put far too much in the, uh, the brush. So let me just wash that bit out. So yeah, almost done there. But as it's drying on um, with the uh, light bulb next to me here, you can already see how it kind of finishes off a little bit. And I've got a finished, in a true sort of blue Peter moment, I've got, here's one I made earlier right next to me, which I'll show you in a tick. Um, so, you know, I might skip past this. I'll, after, the, once I've finished filming, I'll make sure I go and pick out all the other sort of bits and pieces, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, but the, the one I made earlier, uh, is this fella here. All right, so that's how the the armor sort of dries. You've got a little bit of the uh, green underneath uh, in certain areas, um, but it does sort of dry that sort of matte shade, and that's kind of the end result. So, um, yeah, hopefully uh, you've found this technique useful if uh, you're also painting dead Voss drawings, but I should imagine it can be used for multiple different things. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for, for watching. If you've enjoyed this, um, drop me a, a like, a subscribe, comment below um, if there's uh, anything that you've been working on at the moment where this could be useful. Uh, and until next time, guys, uh, take it easy.